Let's discuss journal entries for stocks by going over examples. In our first example, Trust Corporation issued 1,000 shares of common stock with a par value of $2.50 and it sold for $10 per share. You want to debit cash for $10,000. The $10,000 is the $10 per share times 1,000 shares of common stock. Because it's common stock, you want to credit common stock. The common stock, you multiply the par value of $2.50 times the 1,000 shares of common stock, which will give you $2,500. Now your debits and credits do not equal. And you must have more credits. In this case, it's $7,500. That $7,500 will go into an account called additional paid in capital in excess of par value common stock. Now your debits will and credits will equal a 10,000 debit to cash and two credits, $2,500 to common stock and $7,500 to the additional paid in capital account. Let's go to our next example. McDowell Corporation issued 3,000 shares of preferred stock with a par value of $1, and it sold for $8 per share. You want to debit cash for $24,000. That's the $8 per share times the 3,000 shares of preferred stock. Now, instead of crediting common stock like the previous example, this is very specific. This is for preferred stock, so you must credit preferred stock for $3,000, which is the par value of $1 times 3,000 shares of preferred stock. Your last credit is to additional paid in capital in excess of par value preferred stock. This will be $21,000. It's the difference between what you receive in cash and what you recorded for preferred stock. So additional paid in capital preferred stock of $21,000. Our next example is exactly like our previous example for McDowell Corporation. But in this case, if you notice, instead of par value, it says stated value. You would still have a debit to cash for $24,000 and a credit to preferred stock for $3,000. There's also the additional paid in capital, but instead of saying additional paid in capital in excess of par value, instead it says stated value preferred stock. That's the only difference. All right, let's go to our next example. Doc Brown Industries issued 500 shares of preferred stock for $5 per share. Notice there is no par value or stated value. So it's a simple debit to cash for $25,000 and a credit to preferred stock for $25,000 with no additional paid in capital being credited because again, there is no par or stated value. The next example, we have Bueller Corporation who issued 10,000 shares of common stock with a $2, par, $2 par value to acquire equipment. In this case, not cash, but equipment, which had a fair market value of $35,000. So instead of debiting cash like we were doing for previous examples, here we're going to debit what the company attained, which is equipment for $35,000. You're going to credit common stock because that's what the company issued is common stock for $20,000. The $20,000 is the $2 times the 10,000 shares of common stock. The difference will be $15,000. It's a credit to additional paid in capital in excess of par value common stock. So the main point here is it's not always the case that a company will receive cash but they could also purchase such things as fixed assets in exchange for cash. So let's finish out this entry. Additional paid in capital and excess of par value, common stock, and again, that will be for $15,000. Next, we have Snaptastic Corporation who purchased 1,000 shares of treasury stock for $40 per share. It had a par value of $8 per share. This is a case where the corporation buys back its own stock. If that is the case, then your debit 
will be treasury stock for $40,000. It will be the 1,000 shares multiplied by the $40 per share. And then a credit to cash for $40,000. Our last example is with the same corporation, Snaptastic Corporation. Related to the above example, sold, sold 500 shares of treasury stock for $50 per share. So what the corporation did was buy back their stock, then turned around and sold it again. So your debit here is to cash for $25,000. That's 500 shares of treasury stock times $50 per share. Your credit is to treasury stock for $20,000. That's from the $40 per share from the previous example. That's going to be its so-called par. So $40 per share times the 500 shares equals your $20,000 credit to treasury stock. Now, the last credit is to the additional paid-in capital account in excess of par value treasury stock for the difference between the cash, debit, and the treasury stock credit. And in this case, it will be $5,000.